Do you know how Stad is calculating the wind load in the software? See, this is one of the major query that I receive from the students because they are not able to correlate the fundamental theory part with the software calculation. So we are back with another conceptual video how Stad is calculating the wind load and we will able to check the manual calculation as well. Now, if you feel that we are bringing some valuable knowledge to your structure design field, request all of you to subscribe the channel and press the bell icon so that you will never miss the engineering update from our side now let's check out i have taken one sample problem from the building so that i can make you understand how stat is performing the wind load analysis in the software let's check out so let's understand how stat is calculating the wind load and to make you understand i have considered one sample building with a few wind load cases and wind definition now see to define the wind loads on a structure use the define wind load command which is specified over here right and if you click on that you have this options called the intensity and the exposure right now see this command sets the intensity of the wind and the corresponding heights at which these intensities apply so as you can observe here you have these options based on your codal provision and if you wish to enter the values manually you can do that too right based on the codal provision all you need to enter is all the parameters based on the ASC specification that is the codal provision and based on that uh, it has different classification terrain category the way we have in our Indian code right so all of you are aware about the VB K1 K2 K3 K4 parameter so in the same manner for the American code this is the specific uh, se uh, segment now if you want to go for the custom you have the intensity versus height so as you can observe over here i have entered certain values with respect to the heights right so this command sets the intensity of the wind and the corresponding heights at which this intensity is applied along with the exposure factor right so this wind definition basically consider two parameters intensity and the exposure now see if you don't specify any particular exposure factor by default stand is considering one and you can observe this exposure is applied to all the nodes see an exposure factor of one means that the wind load affects the entire area that the joints influence provided they face the winds direction and all the loads and heights are measured using the given unit system for example, uh, the first intensity value, let's say P1, applies from the ground level up to the first floor. Then the second intensity applies between the first two heights, that is H1 and H2 and so on. Right. So the ground level is assumed to be the point with the lowest vertical coordinate in the structure. Right. And the exposure factor basically represents the fraction of that area that the wind can act on if exposed to the wind direction. So basically, uh, let's understand this. See, so the exposure factor represents the fraction of the area that the wind can act on if exposed to the wind direction and the total load on a joint is calculated using this formula got it so ultimately it specifies in terms of the joint load so what is joint load so it specifies your exposure factor influence area into your wind intensity and that's how the stat is calculating your point load Right? So the exposure factor that you specified is calculated as the fraction of the influence area times the influence width for the joint. Right? Now see, in case of the Indian code, you are already aware about uh, the, the factor uh, that is the difference between the external pressure coefficient and internal pressure coefficient. Similarly here, the exposure factor is considered in terms of the parameter. Right? So the built-in wind load generation feature now lets user to specify the exact building panels exposed to the wind and this user control provides a more accurate distribution of the wind forces especially when different vertical section of the buildings are exposed to the wind in different directions so additionally the method for identifying the shape of the panels and calculating the load on the panel corners has been improved in this stack okay now let's just understand uh, this factor let's say I have specified this 
value and uh, if I run the file I have already run this file right and you can observe over here wind on this direction applied with the factor of 1.2 right in the positive x direction similarly you can go with the all different direction right so based on this factor it will calculate your value now the way you are implementing the flow load if you are aware about the flow load see we used to specify all the ranges uh, for the your for your horizontal slab right in the plan similarly you need to specify your wind segment area in terms of range over here right so here i have specified 0 to 9 and i haven't specified anything in x and z ultimately whatever the closed area it will get it will implement or impact the wind load value in terms of joint load now if i specify let's say i only want to specify my wind load for this two rectangles i need to limit my z value over here between these two panels i hope you are getting what i am trying to convey you right so let's let's just to give you an idea right let's say if i want to limit my wind to specify on this grid and this grid right so i need to limit my z value between these two columns right so z is 3.1 and another over here is 6.2 so i can limit over here so the wind will only impact in that direction okay let's just show uh, understand this 3.1 i limit this just to give you an idea later on we will change that 6.2 change you can see that it has considered the enclosed portion in this direction only. right similarly you can implement these values over here right now let's understand how this 3.125 came right so i'll measure this uh, just to give you a highlight let me show you see this is the closed area of one two three columns over here right and i'll again measure the value for this direction 3.1 and it is 3 so based on the exposed area it will calculate so 3.1 and 3 and over here the factor is 1.2 and based on the intensity that you have provided over here right intensity value versus height so based on the height this intensity varies see for up to 5 meter it is 1.04 up to 10 meter it is 1.12 and at 20 meter it is 1.2 so based on this it will calculate right now if if we convert this in terms of the definition that we understood see your exposure factor is 1.2 in stat right here it is where it gone here 1.2 right the influence the area so what is that influence area so let's say if i consider this joint 3.1 and 3 will be my influence area so that is 3.1 and 3 now it is it will distribute your load half at the bottom let's say half at this junction and half at this junction right for this junction half of this and half of this so i have divided that value into wind intensity right so here it is 9 meter correct and up to 20 meter i have specified so at 10 meter see this is top of the building which is at 9 meter so i need to consider 1.12 so that's what it is considered over here and if i calculate this i'll get the value as 3.12 so that is the value that stat has calculated right now similarly just go over this joint so for this joint 3.1 half value of 3.1 and half value of 3.1 ultimately it will be a full length of 3.1 and half of this so at this joint the value will be doubled so 3.1.25 into 2 you will get 6.25 at this node so that's how stat is calculating your values now i hope you are clear how the stat is calculating your wind load so the Ultimately, the exposure factor you specified is calculated as the fraction of the influence area times the influence width for the joint. So I hope now you are clear how STAD is calculating your wind load in terms of the joint profile. Now to give you a more specific idea, you can understand over here, see, 
basically the wind behavior you all know that when the wind will blow on a particular structure let's say the wind direction is this so you can uh, see the behavior that from here it will go outwards outwards and then go further so ultimately when you are acting from the positive p let's say if the wind is acting from here so it will create suction on the side 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 walls and suction on the rear wall that's what the wind behavior is right and if i give you a more detail uh, if i want to give you a more detail uh, you can check out this segment sketch over here see a minus sign indicates that simple that the suctions occur on the other side of the selected structure okay now see if all of the members are selected and let's say x or z is used and the factor is positive then the exposed surface facing in the minus x or z direction will be loaded in the positive x or z direction that is normal wind in positive direction okay similarly if x and a negative factor is used then the exposed surface facing in the positive x direction will be loaded in the negative x direction which is normal wind in the negative direction now reverse the condition let's say if minus x is entered and a negative factor then the exposed surface facing in the minus x direction will be loaded in the negative x direction that is known as suction and similarly if minus x is entered and a positive factor then the exposed surface facing in the plus x direction will be loaded in the positive x direction which is suction so the same condition can be you can identify for the pressure as well okay and the range i have already specified so i hope you like this segment how stat is calculating the wind load so now i hope you are clear with all the conceptual fundamental now if you want to stay updated with the latest engineering updates follow us on instagram and linkedin where we used to provide daily updates on the structural engineering portion also we have whatsapp community check out the link in the description box to join and updated with the daily fundamental design tips stay tuned and remember don't just learn software learn concepts thank you